everyone. A very warm welcome to Simulitis Online. It's so great to have you with us, whether it's for the first time or you tune in week in, week out. We're so glad you've taken the time to do it. Uh, my name's Stu. My name's Lucy. Uh, and together we lead Simulitis in Hamwell. Well, it's been a few weeks since we've been with you, uh, so I wonder what you've been up to. Lucy, what have we been doing? We've, uh, we had a little staycation this week, didn't we? We couldn't go to France like we planned, but we've had lots of fun with friends. And we are at Chestington in the week. That was um, a lot of fun. Uh, you got very wet and splashed a lot on the log through life. I did. Yeah, it was good fun. And um, not just us, but up to a lot. Um, church family, lots of you had loads going on. So... Luke, Holly, and Ophelia, uh, you've got a new member in your house, Baby Wilder. Um, welcome. We can't wait to meet you. I hope you're settling in as a family of four. Uh, Hazel uh, had her 80th birthday a few weeks ago. And uh, Jane and Roy celebrated their golden wedding anniversary as well. Lots of big things, but whether it's a big thing or a small thing, maybe just the chocolate bar that you loved tasted delicious yesterday, put it on the chat. We want to interact. We don't want you to just watch us. We've been doing this a long time now, haven't we, guys? Don't switch off. Join in. We love to hear from you and everyone else in the church family. Put on what you've been up to. Let's see it now on the chat, what you guys have been doing and share together. Uh, so later on in our service, uh, we're going to be looking, uh, continuing our series looking at Paul's letter to the Philippians. So stay tuned for that because I have a question for you that I believe has the power to change the whole world. So that's a big promise. Uh, see if I can deliver a little bit later on. Yeah, you need to keep tuning in for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to uh, just read a little bit from Psalm 95 now as we prepare to worship and turn our attention to our Heavenly Father. Let me read this. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his for he made it and his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. So friends, uh, from our dining rooms or our kitchens, from our bedrooms, our living rooms, wherever you're watching this today, we are invited to come into the presence yeah. of God, to come before him. Wherever you are, God is there with you this morning. And I want to encourage you, uh, I know it can be hard sometimes, but just to turn your attention to him, to enter into worship this morning. So Lucy's going to pray for us now and then we're going to be led in song together. Father God, we thank you that you are with us wherever we are. Lord, will you just come by your presence, by your Holy Spirit and touch everyone in their homes this morning. Lord, that we can all worship you. We may not be together in body, but we can worship you in spirit and truth together. Worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what a Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. Oh, here. Of heaven. 
So it's now time for our family song, guys. You know what to do, whatever age you are, up you get. Come on and uh, keep an eye out. It's not the same as previous weeks. Another little person is gonna be helping you do the action. So let's worship God together now. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and He holds us in His hands. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and He holds us in His hands. He's higher than a skyscraper and He's deeper than a submarine. He's wider than the universe and beyond my wildest dreams. And He's known me and He's loved me since before the world began. How wonderful to be a part of God's amazing plan. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and He holds us in His hands 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 We're now going to move into that part of our service where we're going to share bread and wine In a moment we'll say together the communion prayer But before we do that you need to make sure that you've got some bread and fruit juice or whatever available. And I'm going to suggest that we're just quiet for a moment before we move on to that communion prayer. So let's just be quiet for a moment. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord our God. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven, saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And now, as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. So come, come and take bread and wine, not because you are strong, but because you are weak. Come not because any goodness of your own gives you a right to come, but because you need mercy and help. Come because you love the Lord a little and would like to love him more. Come not because you are worthy to approach him, but because he died for sinners. Come because he loves you and gave his life for you. So come now and do share the bread and, and wine or juice with whoever you're gathered with now.
Father, thank you that we can remember your death and resurrection, be united uh, in sharing the family meal, even in these strange times. And we pray that the power of the cross would be at work in our lives, bringing hope, bringing fresh life. Thank you, Jesus, for the cross. Amen. Amen. So as you remember, last week we didn't have St. Melitis online because it was new wine. And uh, we really hope those of you tuned in. We've had a great weekend. We had watched it with some friends and different people in our garden. It's been great meeting with God together. And the kids stuff was great. We had um, a great fun being astronauts in our house. Um, but what's great if you're thinking, oh, I didn't watch it. Do you know what? It's okay because they're keeping it all online. There's some really great stuff. I really encourage you to... Um, just have a look. There's seminars. It's not just the main session. So for me, I haven't watched the seminars yet. There's some really good, um, if you're a parent, parenting for faith, I'm going to be watching some of those this week. Just check it out um, on the screen now is the website. Go to the New Wine website and you can watch stuff on there. Now, obviously, the last few months have been incredibly challenging for us all. Uh, but we are relatively fortunate to live in a developed country with a, an organised mm-hmm. health system. Uh, but you will be aware that around the world there are many places not like that. And the DEC, uh, a, a collaboration of different UK aid charities, have put together an emergency appeal uh, for uh, particularly people who are displaced by conflict, uh, by uh, food poverty, and who are now living in refugee camps uh, around the world, places like Syria and the Yemen. And uh, we wanted to show you this short video which highlights this appeal this morning. Um, just a warning, some of the images may be a little bit um, difficult to watch, so if you um, find that difficult, maybe just uh, listen but don't watch for the time being. But we really want to encourage you, if possible, to give to this appeal and support people who are so, so vulnerable at the moment. We all understand the devastating impact of COVID-19. Tens of thousands have died in the UK, and we have the benefit of a strong health service. But elsewhere, the virus is tightening its grip on the most vulnerable people, weakened by years of conflict in countries like Afghanistan, Syria, and Yemen. So many people in Yemen have already succumbed to the virus that the grave diggers are overwhelmed. We know that the virus spreads more easily in crowded places, in countries such as Somalia, South Sudan, and the Democratic Republic of Congo, where people have escaped from conflict, the refugee and displacement camps are some of the most densely populated places on earth, and they have few hospital beds or medical supplies. In many camps, like those sheltering Rohingya refugees in Bangladesh, it's hard to wash your hands when there's little running water. The Disasters Emergency Committee, which represents 14 of the UK's leading aid charities, is asking for our donations to help people in places like these, where there's already widespread hunger, malnutrition and hardship. And now there's the threat of COVID-19. With our help, they can rapidly scale up their operations in these most fragile of places, providing essential hand washing facilities, medical supplies and food parcels. 10 pounds could provide 20 bars of soap. 25 pounds could provide a hygiene kit to a family. 50 pounds could provide basic PPE for one frontline health worker for two months. Unless we act now, the deadly new threat of coronavirus could bring more suffering for people who have already lost so much. You can give online now at dec.org.uk or you can call 0370 60 60 900. That's 0370 60 60 900. To donate £10, text the word HELP to 70150. Text costs £10 and the whole £10 goes to the DEC Coronavirus Appeal. You must be 16 or over and please ask the bill payers' permission. For full terms and conditions and more information, go to dec.org.uk. Or you can write a cheque and make it payable to DEC Coronavirus Appeal and post it to DEC Coronavirus Appeal, PO Box 999, London EC 3A3AA. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Let's pray. 
Father, thank you that in all of the situations that we're in, Father, that you give us the opportunity to work with you, to be part of the answer to the prayers that we bring you. Lord, we bring you this morning the situation around the world with the coronavirus, Lord. And at a global level, Lord, we uh, we want to lift to you all of those countries that just haven't had the chance to prepare, that haven't, for one reason or another, whether it be economic or whether it be political, had the opportunity to put in place a, a solid defence against what's happening. Father, we lift to you the populations of those countries, uh, the people that are suffering, sometimes needlessly, Lord, but sometimes just through uh, sheer volume of folks or, or poverty or whatever it may be, Lord, that we, we place those countries in your hand, Lord, and ask that, Lord, that you would show us, uh, the wealthier countries of the world, how we can help even while dealing with the thing ourselves. Father, we bring our own country to you, uh, Lord, asking that you would be touching the hearts of those in power, Lord, that you would give them compassion as well as the necessary decision-making processes to sort sort things out. Lord, we pray that you would temper decisions that are being made with a real understanding for how those decisions affect people. And Lord, we pray particularly again for the disadvantaged, for those who've been thrown out on the streets just because they've, uh, they've lost a job that they were dependent on. Lord, for all those people who have had to go to food banks because um, roles have just disappeared out from underneath them and they still need to feed their families, Lord. In, in so many ways, there are people all around us that have had their lives turned upside down. And Father, we pray that you would touch those in power and Lord, that you would give them um, visibility of all that's going on, Lord, that you would give them compassion for what's happening. Um, and Lord, that you would make this a nation that treats all people alike and understands the challenges faced by everybody. Father, we pray for ourselves in those situations as well, Lord, and we ask that you would make us the means to help out in situations around us. Father, pray that now, just as we have a moment of silence, Lord, that you would touch our hearts and point us to people maybe that we, we haven't spoken to for a long time or folks uh, that we were meaning to call that we, that we just haven't got around to yet or whoever you want to lay on our hearts, Lord, um, that you would give us the opportunity and make us the way of delivering some comfort to folks that, uh, that we come in contact with. So let's just spend a minute there thinking and letting the Lord place those people on our hearts. Father, thank you for that prompting. Thank you that you've brought to mind various people for us. And Lord, we pray that you would touch us and encourage us to, uh, to get in touch with them. Lord, that you would make us uh, part of how we help society around us too. Thank you for the privilege that you allow us into that, that plan that you have. And Father, we praise you that you give us the power uh, to help out in so many ways. Lord, we lift all these situations to you, whether they be global or international, uh, national or our own situations, Lord. And we pray that you would, uh, again, keep us strong so that we can help those around us. Amen. The reading today is taken from Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. Therefore, if any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility value others above yourselves, not looking to your own intent interests, but each of, of you to the interests of others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, do not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearances as a man, who he humbled himself 
by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Most of us uh, would agree, wouldn't we, that we would love to see the world become a better place. Kinder, more considerate, more gracious, more compassionate, more just. And I wonder what you would say would be the, the one thing that could change everything. One thing that would help that to happen. Maybe it would be better technology, better education, better government even. What if I were to say to you that there is, I believe, a very simple question that each one of us could ask, no matter how old or young, no matter how rich or poor, whatever our status, whatever our role, or however we uh, spend our lives, there's a simple question that we each could ask that has potential to change the world. Uh, you probably think I'm maybe overpromising somewhat, maybe gone a little bit crazy even. Well, I do want to suggest to you today that there is a very simple question that we each could ask that could do just that. But before we get there, let me ask you another question. What quality do you look for in people that you admire? Maybe it's intelligence. Uh, maybe it's kindness. Maybe it's ability. Maybe it's patience. What about humility? Uh, this week, I, I came across a few quotes by people who, shall we say, struggle somewhat to nail humility. So listen to this from uh, Kanye West. My greatest pain in life is that I will never be able to see myself perform. Brian Clough, uh, a football manager. I wouldn't say I was the best manager in the business, but I was in the top one. Or this from Muhammad Ali. It's hard to be humble when you're as great as I am. C.S. Lewis, the author, said this. Pride is the one vice from which no person in the world is free and from which everyone in the world detests when they see it in someone else. Which hardly anyone ever imagines that they themselves are guilty of. Isn't that the truth, right? You know, we admit, won't we, all kinds of things that we are bad tempered, that we're selfish, that we struggle not to judge others. But I don't think I've ever heard anyone admit that they struggle with pride. We admit all kinds of things, but I've never heard that. And it's just so hard to be humble, right, isn't it? You know, the moment we think that we've got it down, that we're humble, we've probably got it wrong. But our reading today is actually an appeal to humility, to be humble. Part of the reason Paul's writing this letter to the church in Philippi is to encourage them. He's in prison, he's in a difficult situation, but the church are also in a difficult situation. They're a persecuted minority, and we read about that in chapter one. They're having a tough time. Rome is on top of them. They don't have it easy. And Paul says, you know what, the way to keep going through this tough time is to be united. Like any good team, you need to stand together. And he goes on to say in our reading today that the only way that you can be united is to be humble. He says this in verse three and four. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not to your only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. And we read that, if you're anything like me, and we go, well, Paul, that sounds great. I mean, I'd love to live in a world like that, but that is really hard. I mean, even if I wanted to live that way, how would I go about it? And I think that Paul knows that. So he gives the Philippians and us something to hold on to, uh, something to imitate, an example, a role model to inspire us. He points us to Jesus. He says this, in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. What's that mindset? He carries on. Jesus, who being in very nature God, 
did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. This is completely radical, right? Radical then, radical now, because this is not the way gods behave. Gods don't become servants. They lord it over their creation. That, that's pretty much the very definition of a God. But Jesus doesn't fit our boxes. He comes humbly as a tiny baby born into poverty. Throughout his life, it seems that he, he doesn't want attention. He, he tries to get away from crowds. And he takes the lowly position of a servant, we read, and washes the feet of his disciples. Surely if he was a God, it would be the other way round. And then he suffers the ultimate humiliation, death on a cross. The creator killed by his creation. The most painful death imaginable, all for love, love for you and for me. Jesus doesn't cling to his status, doesn't cling to his rights. He doesn't assert his authority. This is our God, the humble king. But Paul goes on because this humility is powerful. This humility actually changes everything. Because he humbles himself, Paul tells us, God raises him up. His resurrection gives life and a fresh start to all. Paul says, therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that's above every name. And now Jesus is exalted. At the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of of God the Father. And you know, it's easy for us today to miss how extraordinary this claim that Jesus is Lord really was and is even today. Paul is right at a time when the Roman Empire is at its height. Rome, it seems, had brought peace to the whole world. This is their great claim that they've given salvation to all. Where there was chaos, they've brought order. They brought unity to the world. Rome has done it. The emperors have done it. This is the sort of thing they claim that only gods can do. And the emperors begin to be worshipped, to be elevated to gods, the lords of the world. There was a familiar cry at the time that Caesar is Lord. And it was announced as a gospel, as good news. Caesar is Lord. Caesar is saviour. But Paul is saying here in our letter to the Philippians, no, no, that's not really good news because this has come at a price. There's been immense suffering and there's still injustice. There's still not peace. Lives have been destroyed. And you know what? Rome will come and go. Caesar will come and go. But Jesus has come and God has elevated him. He's emptied himself. He's the one who brings true good news for all, true peace, true salvation, true justice. The humble one is the world's true Lord. It's good news then and it's good news today. We can have hope because of Jesus. Despite the chaos and confusion of this world, Jesus Christ is Lord. You know, a story is told of a famous art critic who was studying a painting by the Italian Renaissance master Filippino Lippi. And the picture depicts Mary holding the infant Jesus in her lap with two saints nearby. And this art critic was struck by the amazing use of colour, the skill that had gone into this painting. Yet something about the composition always seemed wrong to him. The proportions of the picture weren't quite right. The hills in the background seemed exaggerated and as if they might fall out the, the frame at any moment. And the two kneeling saints at the feet of Jesus just looked uncomfortable, awkward even. But one day he had a revelation that a problem might be with him, not the painting. He, he dropped down to bended knee and suddenly everything made sense. From this position of humility on the floor, 
the picture looked perfect. The proportions looked all right. Because this painting was actually an altar painting, which was designed to be knelt before in prayer. Only on bended knee was he able to appreciate the true beauty of the painting. And, you know, I think that's a pretty good picture, as it were, of how we're called to live humbly on bended knee before our Lord as Saviour. Because when we do, we get a new perspective on life. If Jesus is Lord, then we can trust him. We can trust him with our lives. Humility begins realising that we don't have to save ourselves. We have an awesome Lord and Saviour who loves us and cares for us. And that inspires us. It frees us to live humbly for others. True humility, someone once, said, someone, once, someone once said, is not thinking less of yourself, but thinking <coughs> of yourself less. So let me get to that question I promised right at the beginning, that I believe has the power to change the world. Anyone can ask it. A simple question we can ask at home, with our spouses, we can ask at work, we can ask our friends, we can ask at church. The question is this, what can I do for you today? What can I do for you? How can I help you? What do you need? What can I do for you today? You see, I believe this tiny question opens us up to a way of genuinely serving one another. Might be a small thing. We might say, yeah, what can I do for you? And it, the answer might be, well, you can put the rubbish out. But if every day each of us, wherever we find ourselves, with our families, uh, with our neighbours, with our um, relationships, in our workplace, if we ask this question, it would be transformative. And in time, our communities, our cities and our nations will be changed, I believe. Because if we don't look for the interests our own interests, but looks at the interests of others, everything changes. You know, and if we do this actually, instead of just one person looking out for you, if you happen to look out for yourself, everyone else starts to look out for you. Isn't that a better situation? What can I do for you today? I believe if we'd ask that question, we'd begin to live in a very different world, a kinder, more compassionate, more just, more generous world. So I want to encourage you this week, imitate the example of the humble king, the one who came to serve, not be served. The one who in emptying him, himself opens the way for us all to know life and opens the way for us all to live without fear and to serve others. The one who calls us to walk in his footsteps. You know, as we do that, as we humbly love and serve the people around us, little by little, I believe, we'll see the world changed. Shall we pray together, friends? Lord Jesus, the world's true Lord, we want to bow the knee before you today and confess you as our Lord and Saviour. Lord, we thank you that you didn't cling to your rights, but you humbled yourself. And you show us in doing so how to live. So we pray even now that you'd send your spirit upon each one of us. In our living rooms, in our kitchens, in our bedrooms, wherever we find ourselves, would you send your spirit afresh? Help us to walk in your way to walk in your footsteps, to serve those around us. Lord, may this question be a spur for each one of us. What can I do for you today? Amen.
spirit be the star that leads me to the humble heart of God I see in you for you are the God of the broken Friend of the weak, you wash the feet of the weary, embrace the ones in need. I want to be like you, Jesus, to have this heart in me. You are the God. together we hope you have a great week this week don't forget that at 11 o'clock today you can join us for a zoom coffee so put the kettle on and uh, details are on the screen now or you can check them out on the newsletter that uh, Stu has emailed to church family It'd be great to see you there yeah so let me pray a final prayer a blessing as we finish our time together this morning so may the lord bless you and keep you the lord make his face shine upon you and give you his peace And so may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you, with all who you love and care for and pray for this day and evermore. Amen. Great to be with you this morning, guys. Do take care. Bye.